stand up if you know your customer avatar like that. So you know exactly who you're speaking to. You know exactly how to present yourself online, what your branding is on point. I pretty much guarantee that 90% of you have not put your hand up. And there's a reason why. It's just something that you never really think about when you're doing all of your marketing, you're doing all the things. And branding is one of the last things that you think about. And it's one of the most important. So I invited on Christine of NoiseAware. She's head of growth. And I watched a fantastic little webinar that they did recently where they broke down the stages of branding. And I pretty much messaged both Madison and Christine. I said, listen, let's just do that. Let's do that for my world. And we were able to break down what each thing meant. It was a really fantastic interview. And I'm looking forward to you to watching or listening to this. For all of this free content that we're giving you is go to hostfully.com. They are the sponsors of the podcast. They make sure this podcast goes ahead. So just go to the hostfully.com, go and get your free digital guidebook. Sign up, get your free digital guidebook. And if at any point in the future you want to upgrade, just type in Boostly 2M in the promo code section, you get two months free. Also as well, if you want to get more help with your social media content, you want to learn more, educate yourself more with how to increase your direct bookings and you want to join a community of book direct people and you want to do it yourself and book direct membership is a, is my thing, the Boostly access that we have. It's $9.99 a month, a full money back guarantee. You get access to all the social media content, you get access to all the tutorial videos you need and you get to get listed on the bookdirectmap.com which is the fastest growing paid listing website for hospitality businesses in the world. So please go and check that out if you want to. Please go and check out Hostfully. If you don't want to do any of them, or if you're already a part of it, of all of those things, then please make sure that you listen or watch this podcast episode with Christine from Noise Aware. But most importantly, like I ask on everyone, is that you implement the advice. All right, without further ado, please enjoy this episode, this conversation with Christine of Noise Aware. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, Christine, I work with Noise Aware, um, head of growth, and I'm actually in Dallas, Texas in the in the U.S. Yeah, I've been working at Noise Aware for about four years now and, and absolutely love it. And I'm excited to be a part of this. I've worked for only startups, which has been a, a lot different than most people's paths. Before this, I was actually working at two different startups, um, you know, one kind of right out of college, and both of them were um, education technology. So it's kind of thriving right now. <laughs> and I still keep in touch with both of them. And then and um, I actually ended up getting into the vacation rental industry and short-term rentals in general because I um, started actually managing a few properties in Costa Rica. I had a friend who was living there and I was kind of helping her with the marketing and the branding and got a little taste of what it's like to actually be a property manager. So I've cleaned toilets, I've, I've done it all, I've checked in guests, I've had a lot of nightmare stories and good stories. And then that actually had me stumble across Noiseware. Yeah, then I got started once I met um, both the co-founders at a networking event, um, which was actually the same place that they met to start the company so it's kind of like a a place of uh of magic i guess because it brings uh brought us all kind of together but yeah and then now i'm here and and um noiseware is basically a, a noise monitoring solution for short-term rental hosts and managers and it allows them to know if there's uh anyone doing any sort of mischievous things that their property may be you know throwing a loud party or uh just getting a little too loud in the evening and and they're able to get an alert and then and then deal with it before it escalates so mm -hmm. it all starts with knowing the target audience so in just simplistic terms please if you could just break down what target audience means to you and most of all how do you explain to a host how they can go about discovering who their target audience or customer avatar would be I mean I think early on one of the things I remember most is we were like we could market to anybody who has a short-term rental but we have to figure out who the ideal customer is and so there's certain characteristics that sort of make up the type of people that you're looking to actually target so yes you may have you know an Airbnb or, or a short-term rental that's in a specific location but it's it may not be fit for every single person so once you sort of identify like what are those characteristics who are those people and honestly it kind of comes from when you first start marketing and you first start doing things you start to sort of find these characteristics once you go out in the market and, and you interact with guests I mean the biggest thing that we did was we actually ended up doing an exercise where we had a bunch of sticky notes we grabbed a white board and like a big wall and we had one member of our team actually take us through this and we actually do it 
ever so often because the landscape of where we're at in the world and travel in the short term rental industry has changed so much. I mean, there's so many new brands that are kind of popping up and, and people are changing. And so um, kind of what we did was figure out like, what are those characteristics? And we just write them down on sticky notes, like really, really quickly. And then we see where there's groupings um, that kind of come, come out of it. Everybody's very different. But once you kind of figure that out, you're really then learning like as much as possible about those people and how you can specifically market to them and find them on the internet, which, um, you know, can prove to be difficult at times. But once you've identified it, you know exactly how to talk to them, you know, what they like, what they don't like, and you can really kind of nail down some of your your brand and your marketing. And it, it's, it can be huge. I like to think we know our customer avatar and our audience really well. We mm-hmm. are on a farm in the middle of the North Yorkshire Moors. Uh, it is set up for a child-friendly property. We've got play area, we've got baby lambs, you know, we've got animals, we've got loads of walks. It's super, super safe, you know, it's got, you know, it's in the middle of the countryside. People come and relax, but then they have time to spend, you know, playing outside with, with kids and whatnot. So we, we know already who the majority of our customer audience is. Say for example, that you, you were chatting to a host and, and they were talking to you about, about branding. If I was in the middle of a city center and it's not so obvious who your, your branding is, what, what sort of advice would you give on maybe trying to establish who that 80 20 is or who they're going to talk to most? For what we did and what I think a host can do is, is sort of just start to find out like some similarities of some of the people who have shown interest in your property because they probably have more people that are somewhat similar to them that are going to show interest. A lot of times, I mean, in the beginning days, like asking some questions, like how did they find out about you? Why were they interested in the property? Or even bigger, like what was their type of stay? Because I think, you know, when you're in a city center, if you start to find that you're getting more business travel, uh, folks, then you're going to want to start to focus towards like, how can I make sure that, you know, I'm saying it's a quiet place, you know, or it's, uh, it's near a subway or, you know, kind of public transportation for somebody who's traveling there, or how can you add more to your guidebook? There's sort of different things that you can kind of do once you learn exactly like either the type of travel or, or what was kind of their main purpose. You know, we sort of learned in the beginning days that there was a lot of vacation rental companies that were kind of a husband and wife duo. So we kept hearing like, oh, hey, I'm, you know, my husband and I, we'll talk this over and then we'll come back and we'll talk to you. And so a noise where we were like, wow, this is really interesting. Like that, you know, these people are running their businesses as a kind of a family unit and we should talk to them about how like, you know, they can get better sleep and they don't have to work 12 hour or 24 hour days when they have noise or installed and stuff like that. So we kind of thought about ways that we could look into any of the problems that they were dealing with or the things that they were sort of seeking. And I think the same thing with, you know, somebody who's seeking a specific property, like they have a reason that they chose yours. Once you kind of find that, that niche that you're a part of, then start to, you know, kind of layer that marketing. So for most people, when you go, what is your why, you know, most people just look blankly staring at the screen right now uh, can you let me know and what everybody everybody's watching knowing what this means and more importantly how how to work out what your why is the biggest thing in the beginning is figuring out really kind of what your core purpose is and what drives you to you know build what you're building there's something there so there's kind of two things i think there's the core value like what do you want to provide you know you're providing some sort of space that's providing an an unforgettable travel memory for your specific traveler and that kind of like customer avatar but the other part of the why is just like how do you want people to feel when they interact with you like how do you want them to remember their stay with you and their interaction throughout that because I think you know specifically with the short-term rental industry and even just us as a company we realized that our brand was so much the people and how we interacted with people and then I think too as a host like their entire stay and how they interact with you and the house and and everything is sort of like a part of of your brand and so if you know how you want them to feel and then what drives you then those two things kind of come together and I think can really have you feel like you're explaining to people like hey this is why I'm doing it is there any other little tidbits that you can give to people when it comes to researching so simple little tactics and tips that we we can sort of put into practice and and what really should you be looking or what should we all be looking to learn at at, at this part of our journey of of, of finding our discovering our brand definitely I mean I think the the most interesting thing is that social media and then obviously the internet is an amazing place I think the biggest thing is there's always something you're striving for you always are striving to be better and, and get your place better whether it be your listing or or 
anything, I remember when we were managing properties in Costa Rica, I was looking at, you know, lots of different property management companies. And I was I was looking for ones that I was striving for, not ones that I thought I could be better than, but ones I was striving to be a lot, you know, more like, and they probably had more money. Mm -hmm. They probably had a, you know, more specific group of portfolios. They probably had already gone through a lot of their branding experience. But mm -hmm. once you kind of learn like, hey, I really love what they're doing here. Like, it's going to spark creativity for you to figure out, like, mm -hmm. how can I do that for how it fits me? You know, a lot of people may think of it as like copying. I remember in the beginning days, I was always like, oh, I feel like I'm like copying other people. But I'm like, no, they're doing something right. Like, you know, there's all these big companies and big brands out there. There's something that they've already figured out, like use that concept and then, you know, kind of figure out how it fits into what you're trying to do. And obviously, like back to kind of your why and your customer, like how it does it fit into those other two pieces? Um, you don't have to do exactly what they're doing, but there's going to be something there that kind of sparks. Why should hosts and business owners look to stand out? And what tips can you share with them to do so? And why would it be beneficial for them, most importantly, in the long run to to not try and be vanilla? One of the biggest things is find things that people are not already doing that you could do that are unique. In the beginning, and I'll share a little example because I think these things kind of always help, but in the beginning of Noisewear, like we're not this like super cool, I mean, I think we're super cool, but <laughs> when we're going to conferences, we're kind of like, we're noise monitoring. We have these noise sensors and they're breaking down parties and they're making sure that people, you know, don't destroy your place. But, you know, we felt like we had to go in and kind of be professional at the vacation rental market conferences and trade shows. And then I realized I was like, let's just be fun and cool like the people in this industry are so fun so we would send out emails and be like hey we will buy you a drink at the bar if you just meet us at the bar mm -hmm. we're going to be wearing these super neon bright shirts they've got florals all over them because we were coming out with a, a new mm -hmm. sensor that could work outdoors and so you know we really looked at companies like a good example is chubby's they're kind of this you know different mm -hmm. brand in the u.s and, and they may even be international but they really stand out in their marketing and they're they're hilarious and, and we kind of looked at what they were doing and we were like how can we be different and stand out these conferences so people kind of say hey I take notice to that and we're not like everyone else who's kind of standing at their booth handing out pens just sort of chit chatter some of them are sitting there talking on their phones or being on their computer and not really engaging and and we tried to actually go out in the crowd and talk to people and be like come over hang out with us like we're going to the party later are you can we buy you a drink like nobody's gonna say no to that and then people are also kind of caught off guard because they're like wow these guys are really friendly and really nice and you know that I think that's a big piece of like just don't be even like stand out like there's there's going to be value in that if you could give any advice with taglines and what are the sort of gems and advice that you could pass on to help a hospitality owner but hashtag live home from home or whatever your tagline is and if you're on the replay put hashtag replay and what your tagline is i would love to to, to, to know what how you describe your property in, in, in as short as way as possible so christine if you could just please share some advice on taglines and how people can discover it. A, a little interesting but how i've done it is i always think there's time there's time mm -hmm. to find to be creative i think from research you're going to find things that you kind of like like i always like will see things that i'll like and it'll give me inspiration like i love people who can give up social media i can't that's like my source of inspiration so i love mm -hmm. like following so many different things for whatever I'm sort of trying to figure out. I think the second thing is kind of like words and phrases that you like, you'll never know how they will sort of pull together. So stop trying to like write out the full thing or the <laughs> like putting home and home, like think of two other words that can replace that. Or I think the one that I stayed at in like California, it stuck with me because it was called farm farmhouse oasis. And it was an oasis, like this beautiful backyard. And, and I'll remember it. Like I still follow them on social media and I still think about it and I could recommend them and it was just two simple words so I think that you know that kind of names the property a little bit but I think I'm sure they have some sort of tagline that kind of goes into that that made me remember the farmhouse oasis part but like thinking about those things and those words that people loved about your place and I would even be surprised that someone may use a really great adjective to describe your place in your listing reviews so reading those reviews and pulling words out and I mean putting stuff in a doc or writing it on a whiteboard and then kind of keeping it there and in front of you is huge I see so many people get stuck in mm -hmm. how they should be talking online chatting online as in the terminology they use people go down the route mm -hmm. of going real formal or and then you know when they're not really formal offline you know mm -hmm. what are the 
main mistake that you see people make when posting online and, and the language that they use specifically from like a branding and like a personal branding sort, sort of point of view and it doesn't have to be hospitality which could be this is this is an all business conversation really i mean i think there's two things i think there's being short like long-winded saying it in so few letters and in words <laughs> um we always we always write down copy uh at noiseware on the marketing side and it's always long and then we just cut it down and it seems like you're making the sentences seem like you're sort of speaking poor English, but you're not. You're making it quick and easy for someone to digest rather than them feeling like they have to read a lot because the world has become so quick and so fast. Like people just don't have time. I can't remember the last time I read an email that had more than four paragraphs. I just, you know, it's almost like, oh my gosh, someone someone shorten this for me, make it quicker. And then I think the other thing too is uh, ship it fast. Like don't wait to make something perfect and really get it out there as quickly as possible because within 48 hours, that post is way down in the feed. Nobody is going to see it. Um, you've got to you've got to kind of be quick. And that's where you can also be short. And then I think the last thing I think I said two, but I'll add a third is we always say write like you're writing to your friend, not your grandmother. Mm -hmm. So I always think that, you know, I'm talking to other people out there that are very similar to my friends and my family. And that's just like the world has kind of become that way. And especially in social media, things are just more like, hey, we're all friends and we're all talking to each other and we're all communicating, especially during this time. I've seen it so much more, you know, where people are just sort of being way more real with content and way more specific online. And they're not writing some formal story about, you know, COVID. I mean, they're just kind of talking in realistic terms, like do the same thing for people that are looking to travel, just be be a little bit more real. I, I really like that. And it's something that will resonate and it'll stick with me. Like the one takeaway that I personally got is talk to like you're talking to your friend and not your grandma. It's 100% right. And I think that's a, a real good one. And I, and, and I wish, wish that everybody would, would take heed to that. There's a lot of people who are using this lockdown, this quiet time in, in their vacation rental business to study, learn and educate themselves and, you know, grow grow their mindset and grow like their, their learning and to, again that will help them on, on the other end so if somebody is, is listening to this whether it's live or on the replay and they're thinking you know what i, I really want to i want to i want to get going i want to get the creative juices going on this where would be the best place that you could say right this is where you should start this is the first thing you should do when you come in to implement it what what would that be well they're probably at the best first place because they just listen to you and i talk about it for like what 30 40 minutes right. <laughs> but no i think the first thing is whether you're first starting out or you're kind of looking to what i like to call is revamp. I mean, we revamp our brand probably every eight to nine months. It may not look like it, but there's a lot that we do in the content and the design to continue to kind of make ourselves, I would say with the times, that's a weird way to say it, but it's sort of sort of true. Kind of, you got to stay up to date. You can't look like you're from the 1990s. A lot of people at work would probably laugh about this, but I always make a dumping doc. I just start to like dump my thoughts because half the stuff is just swirling around in your head and you're trying to figure it out. And you've probably somewhere had a really great idea, whether it's on a whiteboard or putting it in a quick doc. Just like start dumping the information and the stuff that you kind of want to start to do and also start to just go research and find ways you can find inspiration and then go back to starting and kind of writing like, why am I doing this? What types of customers have I had? What have I loved? What have I not loved about the way that I've been perceived? And this would be if you're kind of like revamping or even if you're sort of starting to make a brand. I'm sure there's a lot of people who just have a name of a listing and they haven't really created like who they are and, and what they want to be, how they want to be remembered by their guests. And then from there, just kind of let things start to flow and set up goals of like what you want to accomplish out of out of creating a brand someone wants to reach out to, to noiseware after after this chat where, where's the best place to start do you have a favorite social media channel or is it the website where where would you like people to go we love answering things through facebook messenger so that's a great place if someone wants to contact me directly like i'm so happy to talk about this kind of stuff i love it my email is christine at noiseware.io i'm always happy to answer things and, and like you kind of mentioned i think there's a lot of people right now sort of looking for other things to do and i loved that idea of like survey your customers like that could be the other great place to start is just sort of survey people who had previously been with you. Like I know I'm sharing a lot of information with uh, with different people and kind of reaching out in different ways. So so if uh, anybody wants to find out more about Noise, Noiseware and the products that you you have, where's the, the best place to go? Where are you, you are you worldwide? Like give somebody a little bit more of a reason to come and check out Noiseware website afterwards. Well, you can also kind of see how we, what we've done with our brand. I mean, I think that because we built the first noise monitoring sensor and solution that we had to actually kind of build that category 
right? And I'm sure a lot of you are sort of on the coattails of building the category of short-term rentals and Airbnbs. Like there are still people out there that have never experienced it. So when we found mm-hmm. that there's obviously those uh, stories, we've all seen them of the party disaster. Like no one has any idea when it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. We would never want it to happen to anyone we know um, or that we don't know. So we wanted to kind of blanket the whole industry and say, you know, hosts have a way to know about something before it ever escalates, before it ever becomes a problem. And it's just a simple alert. And um, 75% of noise issues can actually be resolved with just a text message. It's finding out about that issue before it ever escalates. And that's kind of where we come in. As we always do with our uh, interviews, our Boosty podcast interviews, we finish with quick fire questions. Now, obviously, in the times that we are in, I'm calling it the quarantine quick fire questions okay so first one and again if you're watching this live or on the replay please let us know the answers in the comments to your questions if you could be isolated if you could be on lockdown with one celebrity or famous figure uh, it could be dead or alive who would it be i think it would be will ferrell i need somebody who can make me laugh (laughs) that's a good one will ferrell is a great one if there has been a movie or a tv series that's been placed on that watch list and you've taken full advantage of it in lockdown seeing that we can't go anywhere what has been that movie or tv series or what's one that you could recommend to everybody that is that that is tuning in oh my gosh if you haven't watched tiger king you have to it's the most insane series it's the thing you never thought you needed to see (laughs) tiger king is is the one i can definitely vouch for that what is the one thing the one thing that you've missed the most being able to do since being on on lockdown i think the one thing and it sounds crazy but it's probably going to an office with our team i didn't realize how much we collaborated and had fun together and um and those happy hours i really miss it (laughs) it's it's funny this is becoming a a common answer is like being around people what has been your favorite purchase in the last six to 12 months has been under a hundred dollars that one's easy uh it's a milk frother and i have become my own talented barista at home so i'm making what um, my husband likes to call frothy coffees every day um since i'm trying to quit my starbucks habit so yeah so it's jealous. it's like 12 bucks or something but it was like the best purchase <laughs> yeah i'm so jealous i need a barista in my in my life right now i mean yeah. just got this the granulated mm-hmm. not the best i'm looking forward to walking into a coffee shop so do you have a favorite podcast or youtube channel or something that you would just put on whether you're traveling into work or going on a walk or, or wherever someone that you plug into your to your earphones or, or you, something that you spend time out to, to look for did you have any recommendations podcast or youtube channel passion of mine is listening to like murder mysteries so um i love my favorite murder it's kind of like to take a break from work i would say other podcasts i just love when people kind of share ones that are specific to like marketing branding or like the psychology of consumers so i heard adam grant talk a couple times and he's really great so yeah no just i kind of listen to random ones here and there but if i have like a guilty pleasure it's my favorite murder <laughs> nice i like that so, well we will put all of the show links we'll put all, all the links to everything that we talked about including the quick fire questions into the show notes and the final Final one is what is your number one piece of advice that you would pass on to a hospitality owner who would like to increase their diary book? Honestly, right now, I think with COVID and people itching to get out, figure out ways. And especially through, I would say even through Instagram, I've seen so many, but I also haven't seen enough. Figure out ways to market your place when everything starts to open back up travel wise and and think of kind of creative ways of like, what are people going to want most? Is it that family connection with people? Is it going somewhere that's outside of their own apartment? Like, I'm sick of my space. We can imagine that the majority of the world is as well. Like that is what is going to be kind of the next big thing, I think, to get direct bookings and make sure that they're they're linking right to your website and you have that kind of core brand that helps them book your place when everybody's ready to travel again because quarantine will end. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christine, for doing this and for, for taking part. And if anybody does want to reach out, please do go to noiseaware.com. I oh but from me thank you very much for for joining in as always all I ask for you to do for all of these live videos six weeks of live videos every night Monday to Friday all I ask is gonna be three things number one like this video so it gets the Facebook algorithms mm-hmm. going number two leave a comment and leave promote your business little link to your website Facebook mm-hmm. business page and number three is share this video share it on your wall on your business page and a Facebook group, try and spread the word of what we're trying to do here. And if you want to get more advice and tips, go to booster.co.uk. If you want to get a five-step guide to more direct bookings, a little free guide I put together, booster.co.uk forward slash five steps. We will be back again for another live video very, very soon. Uh, If you are watching this or listening this back into the replay, thank you so much for doing so. 